Hey, welcome back guys, it's Dante from SMG War Relics. We're doing another book review. Today we've got Exploring the Dress Daggers of the German Luftwaffe by Thomas T. Whitman. This is his second volume in his um, currently, I think, four volume uh, set that he has. Um, this one is definitely one of my favorites and I think it'll be your one of your favorites too if you're into um, daggers. So this particular one was my father's. It was dedicated to him. Uh, which is pretty cool. So it's got a cool dedication to Chip Gambino. Thank you for your contributions. I hope you like the way they turned out. Best to you. It's a great hobby. Um, Thomas Whitman, number 104. So I'm sure you can get these unsigned um, and numbered and signed and numbered. So uh, the first 104, that's not bad. That's pretty cool. Um, so what's in this book? Lots of good juicy stuff is in this book. It's a rather thick book. So you get a lot of information for your money. Uh, the first couple of pages go into an overview about uh, the Luftwaffe and leading into edge weapons. And it jumps right into uh, DLV and NSFK knives, uh, which is cool. So if you're not sure of the differences, it's gonna have some pictures and it's gonna show you some of the differences and some of the things to look for on those particular uh, daggers or knives, whatever you wanna call them. Doesn't go into a ton of detail here. Um, I'm not sure if it's just because there's really not too much to compare uh, once you know the basics, or maybe there just wasn't a lot of material out there. Um, there are a couple of variations and things that you'll find out there that aren't listed in here, but uh, for the most part, it's like really good. It gives you a solid overview, um, so it's awesome. And then it goes into the transitional DLV and first model. Um, so basically it's gonna talk about and show pictures of the super rare transitional piece uh, that's considered a DLV transitional to first model. Um, and it's got some nice pictures of some in here. Um, super cool dagger, really hard to find. And it's great that there's some nice pictures of this dagger in there. All right, so what else does it get into? Uh, then it jumps into the first pattern. So it gives you a nice list of makers of the first pattern. Um, so you know kind of what to look for and potentially a red flag if you see maker marks that aren't these particulars. There may be some other ones that aren't listed here. I don't know for a fact, I haven't gone through that. Um, this book was put out in 97, so I'm sure there's been new information to come out since this book. Uh, but again, it's a really great uh, introduction to them. Um, just like the book on army daggers, it goes through uh, the components of the daggers on the first model and the second model. So you can know what to look for. Um, shows you some of the differences, um, of course, between the earlier produced first models and the later produced first models, um, as well as the transitional or mid-period uh, models. So if you were like me when I was first uh, learning about these first model daggers, I was confused, you know, what's this one, what's that one, why does this one look different than this one? You know, this one's shiny and new and this one looks like crap or, or you know, what's the difference? Uh, this is going to help you break all that down. So it's a, a must-have for uh, a first model Luftwaffe collector, uh, in my opinion, you should have this for sure. Okay. Um, let's see what else is in here. Let's skip ahead. So just like the, um, army book, it's going to show you some, uh, presentation and fancier models towards the end of that particular chapter on the first models. And then it goes into the second models, just like the here book or the army book. It's going to show you different pommels and stuff, uh, which is super helpful when you're trying to identify unmarked uh, second pattern daggers. Because a lot of them, you're, come, you're going to come into contact with a lot of unmarked ones and you don't really know what you have. If you start looking at uh, the components, especially the pommels, you can start to figure out what type of dagger you have or who made the dagger. Okay, so super helpful information in here. All right, let's see. Cross guards. Again, super helpful to see all the different cross guards out there. 
nice detailed clean f uh, pictures most of them are black and white but that's okay uh, especially for this tagger where it's just just bare aluminum anyway so they, they look really good and you don't necessarily need color um, so again more detail on the cross guards uh, grips another important facet um, it does a nice job of kind of telling us about uh, the quote-unquote funeral daggers um, and actually lists I think one of these is my dad's funeral dagger in here somewhere um, I think that's one he sent in who's this one from uh, Johnson's nope let's see what else we have we'll get to it I'm sure we'll fast forward a little bit ah yeah here we go so like right here this is uh, a funeral dagger that my uh dad had i think no here it is right here sterling gambino so my dad owned this dagger at one point and it was uh something that he let uh mr whitman take a picture of for his book and it's just beautiful so a nice little blurb about funeral daggers and how they're really just uh white painted um grips that the paint came off of um basically in a nutshell but they're still worth more money and they're they sell for a premium so scabbards of course just like the army book real helpful i mean if you've if you've had any amount of uh second model uh, luftwaffe daggers you know that the scabbards can look completely different um the rings are just always looking different from one to another so that'll help you kind of pinpoint manufacturer scabbard throats again um, an easy way to decipher a WKC from uh, a regular or another brand or another maker um, let's see what else is in here four chip good luck I don't know why that's in there I don't know whose handwriting that is maybe that's Whitman's handwriting who knows or maybe it's Galen's who knows what else is in here <clears throat> Towards the end, again, we're going to get into um, presentation patterns and things that were available, custom ordered. Uh, this one's from the Weights Collection, and this one was my dad's right here. Sterling Gambino Collection. Um, don't know where this dagger went. It's a cool dagger, though. I don't have it. Let's see. Personalized daggers, some really cool examples. Uh, and also gets into um, Generals Deegan's. So you'll see General Deegan's in here, a couple different examples. Uh, most of the General Deegan's look the same, unless you were lucky enough to get a personalized one. A little bit on miniatures, which is fun. And that's about it. So I'm not sure what these are going for on the open market, uh, but honestly, if you collect um, daggers, you need to have this in your collection. It's uh, definitely a foundation piece for any edge weapon collection. It's still um, usable, even though it's now becoming decades old. It's still a modern work, in my opinion. Um, it's still going to help collectors. It's still going to help dealers figure out what they have, exactly what they're looking at, um, and also determine if uh, help determine if their dagger is a parts dagger, um, and just so you have a little more information about the item that you have. So it's a must-have, in my opinion. It's a, a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 in terms of uh, how badly you should you should have this, how important it is to have in your collection. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.